used to be an x-ray tech in my early 20s. I got married and became a stay-at-home mom. I have three kids, uh, Nicholas, Abby, and Maddie. Once I had the kids grow up and they're out of the house, I decided to do something fun and I am a Friday consultant. I also play the flute. I play in the Grand Rapids Symphonic Band. My husband owns his gym. I love to work out there with him. I try to stay active. I feel that's important when you have a rare disease to try to lead a normal life, as much as normal as possible. Switch it up, five more. My name is Renee, and I have type one plasminogen deficiency, or PLGD. So PLGD is plasminogen deficiency. That is most commonly called type one plasminogen deficiency. It's a decrease in the amount of plasminogen, both measured by activity and antigen levels in the blood. And individuals who are affected with this disorder develop what we call ligneous, which means woody, lesions most commonly present on mucous membranes, extravascular sites, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, other areas. There are two main types of plasminogen deficiency, type one and type two. Plasminogen deficiency is inherited as what's called an autosomal recessive trait. So autosomal means it's not on your sex chromosomes, it's on your other chromosomes. Renee was not actually diagnosed until she was in her 50s, but she was symptomatic due to the deficiency in early childhood. I started having lesions form under my eyelids, which I remember as a kid having those when probably I was three. I remember if I got a infection, it always seemed to take longer to heal. Or if I had um, a wound, like if I scraped my knee, it seemed to take longer to heal. The signs and symptoms of plasminogen deficiency are variable from person to person, but what we see is what we call these ligneous or woody lesions that develop. The most common sight that we see are the eyes, under the lids of the eyes, and they can uh, damage the cornea and actually lead to loss of vision. You also see these lesions in the inner ear. They can be misdiagnosed as ear infections, and uh, block the drainage of fluid from the ear. And we also see them commonly in the mouth, so you can actually lose teeth because of these lesions if they are persistent over time. I was in and out of doctor's offices. I, uh, I mean, my mother, my, my poor mother, of all the stress she had to be going through, taking me all these different specialists. Having a delayed diagnosis leads to a lot of stress and uh, difficulty in uh, the child's life. Then later on, I was married, trying to have um, children, come to find out that, that my disease is, Part of that is infertility. What's difficult about making the diagnosis is the rarity of the disorder. It's crazy to me that I went from the age of three to 50 and no one 
could tell me what I had. No one had any clue. It wasn't until my ophthalmologist taking a long shot with a simple blood test to tell me that I have type 1 plasminogen deficiency. We were together during her diagnosis, and I remember the waiting period was very stressful for both of us, um, just the not knowing. My husband being as sweet as he is, he wanted to calm me down by saying, well, let's just wait and see what the blood test shows. And um, so, lo and behold, <laughs> a week later, the blood test showed I had plasminogen deficiency. When she did get the diagnosis, there was definitely a sense of relief between both of us. Finally, I had answers. All this time, I felt like I was just this medical mystery. When I first saw an individual who was affected by plasminogen deficiency, I think it was 20-something years ago. At the time, the only way to really replace plasminogen was to give what we called fresh frozen plasma. So when you donate blood, the and they separate the blood into the red cells and to the the liquid portion. The liquid portion is called plasma, so it does contain plasminogen. But the problem is the concentration of plasminogen in blood is very low. Once my ophthalmologist had diagnosed um, me, I just missed a study for a new medical product that had promising hopes, which would have been helpful. My doctor wanted me to start fresh frozen plasma. It was hard on both of us, but more so Renee, because she had to sit there uh, for six hours at a time, three times a week, taking ultra mega doses of plasma, and then turn around and know you have to do it three days later. Um, it was very taxing on her. It seemed to just be endless. It was extremely slow. In fact, it got to the point where it was just so hard on my body. I was having reactions to the fresh frozen plasma. Once the drug was approved, um, I needed to have a procedure done. I had to have a uh, lung biopsy. I remember like it was yesterday that when they first administered the medication that within seconds um, the crackling there was crackling in my ear I could like it was opening up and same with my sinuses and then later that day the lesions that were on my gums were gone we found that that concentrated form of plasminogen was very effective at treating their symptoms and allowed lesions to resolve and patients to improve their quality of life and function. It's not curable at this point in time. It can be managed through replacement of plasminogen into your body to help get rid of the lesions that develop in all of these areas. I take it every three days and I do it through a port. It's a IV administered drug. I've always tried to keep an, a, a, a positive outlook or not try to let my kids see when I'm feeling blah. They've said they worry about me, especially when they see all the medication that has to be administered, the nurse coming in, not feeling well. I want them to feel secure that their mom's gonna be around for a while. There's a lot that could be prevented if we diagnose these individuals early and have a care provider that's aware of the many different areas that plasminogen affects so that they are identified early. With plasminogen deficiency, it's unlikely that you know anyone in your community that has that disorder. So connecting with a support group helps provide education, information, and helps look at uh, research that's being done. We've come a long way in the past 20-something years. 
I think patient outcomes are improving with the availability of a concentrate. I'm hopeful that we can start diagnosing individuals uh, sooner and sooner to the onset of their symptoms and that also in the future uh, we can develop a form of plasminogen that's made in the laboratory instead of harvested from uh, blood. That is the next step, I hope. I know there are other patients out there who are worse off than I am. There's children that have lost their eyesight. Um, there's people who are fighting for their lives. Have I had struggles? Absolutely. Are they to the severity of others? No. If nothing else, I want my story to be out there. All right, here we go. If I can help one person so they didn't have to go through all of the unnecessary tests and all the doctor visits. Okay, I like that. It's a good thing to be able to help more people with this disease. Renee's health today is really good. I mean, it's probably the best she's felt in a long time. So we just keep living life and staying as healthy and fit as we can.